Let's take a look at an interesting concept called controllers in Das Studio. Hello everyone, I'm Jay and on this channel we're helping you become better 3D artists with Das Studio. Today I want to have a look at a concept called controllers. Those are sort of proxy dummy dials that you can create yourself. They often also come with products that you buy and they can drive multiple other sliders in your scene. So imagine you had something like a lizard's tail that wants to curl up and the tail is rigged with several bone pieces. And in order to make the curling motion happen, you'd have to dial in a little bit of rotation on multiple bones. And that's very cumbersome and convenient if you had to do this from scratch. So you can create yourself a controller that does this for you on multiple joint rotations. This also works with morphs. Say, imagine you wanted to have a custom character that you create out of, say, 20 morph sliders all individually dialed up and you want to all marry all these adjustments up into one slider then controllers can help you out there let's take a look at a concrete example here with my genesis 9 figure this is just a basic dev load so we have no eyes just to make it all really really simple and imagine i wanted to create myself a custom character here so I'd go under the parameters tab and I first of all I find myself a spot where I'd like for my custom property to be. So let's just say I want to go under people and base because there's not much under base here. I'm just going to go and do that. And here I have to go and turn this parameters tab into edit mode. I do that by right clicking on it, selecting edit mode here. And then you see that these icons change a little bit. Now I can right click again and create myself a new property here. And that'll give me this rather intimidating looking dialogue. We can be very chillaxed about this. All we need at the top here is a name, something descriptive for us. So I'm going to call that custom character. There's a difference between the name and the label. The label is what you see here in the interface and the name is what Das Studio sees under the hood. So when content creators use this, this needs to be a very unique name so that it doesn't interfere or override any existing properties. But if we just do it for our own scenes, we don't have to worry too much about it. So uh, actor people base is the location of where that is. I'm going to leave everything else as its default except for one thing at the bottom here these are the float properties here property type is at the top here we can leave that on float as well at the bottom here minimum is set to minus one maximum is set to one i think my minimum should be set to zero so that i can't dial my adjustments into the negative because i know that's not going to look good then i hit create and that is my custom property created here it doesn't do anything because it doesn't know what other sliders it should drive essentially so let's make that happen. I'm going to go into just my feminine section here. I'm going to go and dial up a few dials that might make up my custom character. So perhaps Minerva, a little bit of Minerva, and perhaps a little bit of the basic female, and perhaps a little bit of Pixie. And, you know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's my custom character now, just as an example here. If I go back to my property here, my slider, I can go and right click on it again and then choose this option at the bottom here that's called ERC freeze. I believe that stands for enhanced remote control. If I go and click that, another dialog comes up that shows me on the base figure all the things that have been adjusted from their base value. So the base value isn't always zero. It, it can be, and most often it is. It just detects anything that deviates from the default value. And those are all my names here. So those are not the labels. Those are the labels are the brackets here. And the names are these unique long strings in the front here. So those things I've dialed up and those things I want to marry up. So I'm going to go and click accept down here. Then if my slider is dialed up to 100%, I see that all these things are in place. If I go out of edit mode now, I can go and move the slider back to zero. And that now dials all my adjustments out of my custom character again. That's how a controller works. And you can save this with your scene. Content creators can also save this out by heading over to File, Save as Support Asset, and then go to Morph Asset. This opens up a dialog that you need to be kind of familiar with. I'm not going to go into the details here, but you'd go in and find where your slider is. So in my case, it's Actor People 
space and that's it the cousin character here that i've misspelled if you click that and hit accept then this will save out a file in this location on this product so i'm not going to go into details here but if you're a content creator then you know what i'm talking about so if you're a user i strongly recommend you don't use this system and you save it as a scene subset or a scene instead let me show you one other example. So this is something that you might encounter. This is how things get uh, can get a little bit more complicated here. If I go and select my Ivar character, so that is a custom character. He doesn't have a pose just yet, but he has a custom character morph dialed in. And I've got this hair prop here that I'm thinking I want to create a curling morph for. So you may have seen this in hair props that you have a wind waft morph. Those can either be morphs, but they can also be done with controllers. So in this case, my ponytail here, if I right click on it, then I can see that it has multiple bones. If I drill into the scene here i see that my ponytail has bone one bone two bone three and if i start from say bone four i can go and dial these things up here bone four i might skip one and go to bone six and you know give it that kind of curling up motion here and bone seven as well so there we go so i've twiddled with several sliders here and if i wanted to turn those into a controller that does all this at the same time. Let me show you how to do that. I'd go either into Ivar or into the hair prop. Doesn't really matter. I might go into the hair prop here and head over to actor. Perhaps adjustments is a perfect category for that. We have one that's called expand all, but I'm going to go and create myself one that's called, I don't know, hair curl, for example. So right click and switch the parameters tab into edit mode, create a new property that I'll call hair curl or hair ponytail curl something like that minimum slider i'll set that to zero maximum to one that's okay hit create and that is that now i can go and right click this head over to erc freeze and then that dialog comes up again but it might look a little bit scarier than before because we may see lots of adjustments in here that i haven't actually dialed in so we see that something's happening on the head base the fit over pans and there's some something else that i haven't actually checked here so if you create a controller like this be aware of what properties you'd actually like to free so in my case i want to untick these things here had i created this controller on ivar then there would be a lot more things in my table that would be popping up so only select the ones that you actually want to use there is an option to unselect and deselect all of them so if i'd say uh, you know if you had a long list of 20 things you can select them all and then right click and say toggle selected and that will select or unselect all of these so same thing i could just go and these are the the bones that i've actually adjusted these i want to select toggle selected and then that's that hit accept for bottom and then my controller is created there we go let me go and take this out of edit mode if you're still in edit mode you can still use the slider you just have to double click in it so i find it nice to just go out of edit mode and then i can go and uncurl my hair so this is really convenient if you had lots of little properties that you'd like to marry up on one slider. And that is what we can do with controllers. I hope you found this helpful and I hope I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.